What this medical school is doing is building your future. Okay? It's up to you whether you want to build your future or not. في شباب سألوني قالوا إحنا مش فاهمين ال كريجو بارادايم فص حطيت على الإيرنينج يوتيوب فيلم بيوضح ال كريجو بارادايم فص فاللي بده يطلع عليه إزدار أوكي We will be addressing the uh, brachial plexus. Why do we have a plexus? The answer is because we want to have fine movements of the fingers and the hand. People make their livings with, your, with their fingers. Simple simple spinal nerves supplying all this great number of muscles is not enough to produce fine movements and we need to hold the pen we need to write okay rassam bad yirsam wal tabib bad yifhas bi asabahu wal mekaniki bad yishtaghal Simple arrangement of spinal nerves is not good enough. Therefore, we have rearrangement of spinal nerves. This rearrangement is going to happen in a plexus. Some plexuses are simple, like the cervical. Some plexuses are more complex, like the brachial plexus. Right? What sort of life do you think this baby is going to have? Or his family? It is going to be a very difficult life. It's going to be a very difficult life. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. Don't do this. Don't do this. You will tear the brachial plexus. Takes few seconds. Takes few seconds. Yiji insan tabib ignorant mayf and what is the brachial plexus. Ulamana fahiya muhadara. Bitruk muhadara bitla. Yiji where the head of the baby is stuck, EG or TG, thermal flexion, mazzaqat al brachial plexus, what's the fill? Tala hai. Naam. Distortia. Distortia. This is the meaning. It means it's it gets stuck. كل شيء له حل. كل شيء له حل. لما تروح نسائية الموضوع ينطرح هناك. فالنتيجة أن هذا الطفل هذا الطفل وعائلته دمرت لأنه 
اجى من لا يملك لا العلم ولا المعرفه ولا القدره in simple movement in second a result is this uh, this is what you are going to face in the future لما تيجي يقول انت كنت السبب يقول لك لا مش انا لا مش انا ما حد علمك بريكر بلاكسس قول لا ما حد علم this is what usually happens فديروا بالكم يا شباب يا صبايا medicine is nice but medicine is critical you have to have enough science you have to have زيدوني علامات نجحوني وبعدين لا تملك العلم والمعرفة والقدرة وتجي تؤذي الناس okay. This is uh, one simple example Again, this baby is a newly born and he or she kick but this limb is lying on the bed. Doesn't move. That is a big problem. Again, you can see the position of this upper limb. This is total destruction of brachial plexus. In this adult person, you compare this green upper limb with the red one, you can see how the muscles are wasted. Muscles, when they lose their nerve supply, they stop functioning, they atrophy, and <clears throat> this right hand and right arm, how is he going to make a living? <clears throat> it is a big problem. <clears throat> Here is a person where the muscles here are atrophied. This is infraspinatus teres minor. La tsiron da katrat nisaiya dirubalko. For this module, you need to reactivate your knowledge of the muscles and their actions. Okay. What's wrong with this person? This person has his scapula not stuck to his chest wall. That is called winging of the scapula. What keeps the scapula in position is serratus anterior. Serratus anterior is supplied by a nerve called long thoracic nerve. Comes from brachial plexus. <clears throat> this person, if you compare the right shoulder with the left shoulder, you can see on the left side that the bony features are more evident. That means the deltoid is atrophied. That means it has problem with its nerve supply. Nerve supply of the deltoid comes from brachial plexus. This is a more severe atrophy of the deltoid muscle where you can even see the greater tubercle of the humerus. And you can see the upper part of the shaft of the humerus. No rounded, nice shoulder. The muscle, the deltoid muscle has gone because the nerve supply has gone. Can this person perform his daily activities very well? No, because he has deformity of muscles supplied by ulnar nerve. Ulnar nerve is a branch of the brachial plexus. If you look at the hands of this old person, you can see that the thinner 
eminence here is not comparable to this one. This one is atrophied. Thinner muscles are supplied by the median nerve. There's a problem with the median nerve, atrophy of thinner muscles, loss of function of the thumb, and the thumb is important for the function of the hand. This person cannot extend the wrist and cannot extend the fingers. Now, who can live with hand like this? Cannot eat, they cannot eat do lots of things. We need extension. Extensors are supplied by the radial nerve. Radial nerve is one of major branches of brachial plexus. Can you clean yourself? Can you have a shower without a brachial plexus? The answer is, is no. What's going on? What's happening? What's the story? It's the story of the brachial plexus. The starting point is here. <clears throat> Dorsal rootlets of a spinal nerve, <coughs> completely sensory. Dorsal root, it was rootlets, now it is a root. Dorsal root ganglion. Cell body of the neuron is located here. The ventral rootlets, purely motor. The ventral root. Sensory and motor, the dorsal and ventral, they unite to form spinal nerve. The spinal nerve is a very short nerve. very soon divides into dorsal ramus and ventral ramus. This is the dorsal root, dorsal root ganglion. This is the ventral root, this is the spinal nerve, this is the dorsal ramus. which is going to supply skin and muscles of the back. Muscles of the back are not uh, responsible for fine movement. They're, they do coarse movements. The ventral ramus which, which is going to supply muscles of the upper limb, muscles of the lower limb, they are structures that will create plexuses. A notch in the pedicle of the superior vertebra, a notch in the pedicle of the inferior vertebra plus a vertebral disc will make an intervertebral foramen. This is where the spinal nerve is. In this <coughs> CT scan, you can see these are intervertebral foramen. This is an MRI where you can see this is the intervertebral foramen and this is the spinal nerve. People who have disc prolapse, uh, prolapsed disc will press on the spinal nerve. Here's the story of the brachial plexus. This is scalenous anterior muscle between spines of the upper cervical vertebra and the first rib. And these are the ventral rami of spinal nerves. Where is the brachial plexus? The landmark of the neck is the sternomastoid. And we look for the brachial plexus in 
this triangle called the supraclavicular triangle. This is what we see in the supraclavicular triangle. <coughs> we see scalenus anterior, scalenus medius. Sometimes the, the rami will be trapped in the muscle. This can happen. Scalenus anterior, scalenus medius. This is the roots of the brachial plexus, the ventral rami. They are superior to subclavian artery. Subclavian artery is separated from the subclavian vein by the scalenus anterior. The brachial plexus is present at the apex of the lungs, separated by pleural membrane. Therefore, tumors are, or severe inflammations of the apex of the lung can affect brachial plexus. Pectoralis minor covers part of the brachial plexus. You can see this is the clavicle. This was the subclavian vein now becoming axillary vein. The artery is deeper and you can see some parts of the brachial plexus. This is an MRI of brachial plexus. Bad pathology of the brachial plexus. Dorsal rami don't make plexus. There is no need for a plexus. There is no need for rearrangement. This is cervical plexus. This is the brachial plexus. These are the ventral rami or the roots of the brachial plexus. And this is the whole image of brachial plexus. This is the beginning, this is the whole, the whole image. This is the vertebral column. What emerges here is spinal nerves, and what comes here is the ventral rami, and this is scalene anterior muscle. spinal nerves, then upper, middle, and lower trunks. They are superior to the clavicle. Then the trunks will divide into anterior and posterior divisions. This, these divisions are <coughs> behind the clavicle then divisions the will create cords, lateral, posterior, and medial cords. Cords are behind pectoralis minor. And then nerves are in the axilla. <clears throat> these are the stages of the formation of brachial plexus, and these are their locations behind scalenus anterior, above the clavicle, behind the clavicle, posterior to the <coughs> pectoralis minor and in the axilla. <coughs> These are the roots of brachial plexus. Ramus five, six, seven, eight, T1. This is what constitute the brachial plexus. Five, six, seven, eight, T1. Sometimes C4 has a contribution. Sometimes. <clears throat> the 
this is a cadaveric brachial plexus. Roots, you don't see all roots because here <coughs> scalene anterior is still intact. And you know which nerve that runs across the scalene anterior coming from the cervical plexus. This is the phrenic nerve. So it is roots, trunks, trunks divide into divisions, and divisions make cords, and cords give final branches. C5, C6, 7, 8, T1. They are quite large because they carry sensory and motor. Good bunch because we have large number of muscles. So that we need large number of axons. So these are roots of brachial plexus. Next is trunks. C5 and C6 will form the upper trunk. C7 goes alone, doesn't unite with anything. And C8 and T1 make the <coughs> inferior trunk, lower trunk. And then divisions. The upper trunk would divide into anterior and posterior. The middle trunk divide into anterior and posterior and the lower trunk divides into posterior and anterior. These are divisions. Then the cords in relation to the axillary artery. This is the lateral cord, this is the posterior cord, and this is the medial cord. And cords give final branches, final nerves. This is musculocutaneous, median, and ulnar. In the axilla, we don't have only the brachial plexus. We have arteries and veins uh, and lymph nodes. C5 and C6, they make superior trunk. C7, goes alone, making the middle trunk. C8 and T1, they make the inferior one. These are the th three trunks. Since the subclavian and the axillary artery are in front of the nerve, you see the branches crossing the brachial plexus. Green ones are posterior divisions, and the brown ones are anterior division. So this is the posterior division of the lower trunk. This is posterior division of the upper. They make the posterior cord. <clears throat> this is an anterior division anterior division and anterior division, okay? They make cords, medial cord, posterior cord, and lateral cord. This is lateral cord because it is lateral to the axillary artery. This is posterior cord because it is posterior to the axillary artery. And this is the medial to the axillary artery. One of the final branches of the brachial plexus is the radial nerve, the nerve for extensors. What's the story of the radial nerve? C5, C6, C7, C8, T1. 
all three trunks, all roots, all three trunks, but posterior divisions, posterior cord. Okay, you know why? Because in normal anatomical position, the extensions are posterior. Okay, and that's the radian nerve. This is the whole story of the radian nerve. And this is the final <clears throat> of the radian nerve coming out of the posterior cord. Okay? This is the lateral cord and this is the medial cord. And you can see that this posterior cord is made of one, two, three posterior divisions. Now the story of auxiliary nerve. C5, C6, C7. Okay? In many cases, it's 5 and 6. Sometimes, 5, 6, 7. Which trunk is this? The superior one. Posterior division, posterior cord, auxiliary nerve. Median nerve as a final product of brachial plexus. C5, 6, 7, 8, T1. All trunks, but anterior divisions only. Okay. Both cords, lateral and medial. Both cords, no posterior element, produce the median nerve. This is the whole image of the median nerve. Roots, trunks, cords, and divisions. That's the final product of the median nerve having two roots, one from the lateral and one from the medial. That's the median nerve. Now the ulnar nerve as another product of the brachial plexus. It is C7, C8, T1. Middle trunk, lower trunk, anterior divisions, okay, and the ulnar nerve. That's the whole story of the ulnar nerve. And that's the end product of the ulnar nerve. The other end product of the brachial plexus is the musculocutaneous nerve, the nerve that supplies flexors the anterior compartment of the arm, flexors of the elbow, the biceps, the brachialis, and coracobrachialis. It is C5, C6, C7. Upper trunk, middle trunk, anterior division and anterior division. Lateral, cord, musculocutaneous. That's the whole story, and this is the end product. You can see it is going towards the coracobrachialis and going through it. This used to be subclavian artery once it gets in the axilla, it becomes the axillary artery and the brachial plexus becomes surrounding the axillary artery. This is lateral to the axillary artery, lateral cord, and from the lateral cord going towards the coracobrachialis. This is a summary of the brachial plexus.
مكان طلعتهم من الاول Now the minor branches. If I have the rhomboids major, the rhomboids minor, and the beta scapulae are just posterior to C5, why doesn't C5 give these muscles their nerve supply? Why should the nerve supply come from another place? So C5 gives the dorsal scapular nerve, right? Now, if the superior trunk is just anterior to the scapula, where you have supraspinatus and infraspinatus, then the superior trunk will give these muscles uh, their nerve supply. Okay. Dorsal scapular nerve, also a branch of C5. This is the long thoracic nerve going for serratus anterior. It comes from 5, 6, and 7 roots. Suprascapular nerve from the upper trunk. <clears throat> if the whole presence of the brachial plexus is in front of the subscapularis muscle, so it is going to supply this subscapularis muscle before its final branches. And subscapularis muscle is strong, thick muscles. Therefore, it has two nerves, the upper branch of the posterior cord and the lower also branch of the posterior cord. Then I have the smith dorsi, big muscles at the back. It receives thoraco dorsal nerve, a branch of the posterior cord. Then, in the front, I have pectoralis minor covered with pectoralis major. So, there is lateral pectoral nerve coming from the lateral cord and medial pectoral nerve coming from the medial cord. There is this contribution from T2. It is intercostal brachial nerve. This is going to supply skin on the medial side of the arm. Mm -hmm. T1 is involved really in the breaker plexus. T2, you get full belechir to supply a little area of the skin here. Ah, yeah, and you cannot, you cannot say, look, my breaker plexus is 100% like yours. You see, in certain group of people, you find C4 has a contribution. I'm not saying that all C4 is in the uh, brachial plexus. Most of C4 is in the survival. But in some people, C4 has a contribution to the brachial plexus. Superior trunk with two contribution. Middle trunk, two divisions. Inferior trunk, two divisions, and this is the posterior cord. Contribution from three divisions. One, two, three. And 
continues as a posterior cord. Posterior cord gives radial nerve auxiliary. That's the posterior cord. Contribution one, posterior division, second and third. This is the lateral cord, and this is the medial cord. <clears throat> if we look into this area, the end of cords in the axilla, <clears throat> behind the pectoralis minor, we see this M arrangement. We are going to use this M arrangement as our guide when we go to the lab and see cadaver. We look for the M and we go medially and laterally to find our way into the brachial plexus. What makes this M arrangement? Musculocutaneous. That's one limb. Median nerve. The median nerve has lateral and medial roots and the ulnar nerve. This is, these are the structures that make the M-shape arrangement of the end product of brachial plexus. This is the musculocutaneous getting into the coracobrachialis. This is the lateral root of median nerve, the medial root of the median nerve, and the ulnar nerve. These are the structures that make the M arrangement. Posterior cord of the brachial plexus giving the axillary and the radial. Pectoralis minor covers the cords and what emerges from its lateral border is the final major nerves of the brachial plexus. Now, this is the subclavian artery. Posterior to scalene's anterior. Once this artery crosses the first rib, it becomes the axillary artery. This is where the brachial plexus is going to surround the axillary artery. That is scalenus anterior. This is the subclavian artery. And these are what? Which stage of brachial plexus? Divisions. Divisions and trunks. You can see how the brachial plexus is living around axillary artery. That's the posterior cord. This is the axillary nerve. Branch of the posterior cord. This is the radial nerve. The long thoracic nerve <clears throat> is going to supply the serratus anterior. It's C5, 6, and 7. This is the suprascapular nerve emerging posteriorly supplying the supraspinatus and infraspinatus and this is the quadrangular space where the axillary nerve comes and turns around the head uh, the neck of the humerus end of the story okay Now, this is the mind map of the median nerve. You had an idea about uh, carpal tunnel, okay? Which is a common problem, especially among your mothers. 
and who, who are hard workers raising you. They feel the numbness, they feel the pain and the weakness, and they start to drop things. Now, why is there an apple here? There is an apple here because it is an example of holding something in your hand, okay? And you have ulnar nerve feeling the apple and median nerve feeling the apple. The palmar branch of the median nerve comes several centimeters proximal and it does not go into the tunnel. Therefore, the central part is intact. You can still feel things, but the fingers you don't feel well if there's a carpal tunnel. So if you hold an apple, okay, you think it is going to fall because you don't feel it well on the thumb side, but you feel it very well on the ulnar side. So you, you press it to hold it well and the apple will fall. That is how uh, things fall from from the hands of people suffering from carpal tunnel. Uh, we, when we study the final branches of the brachial plexus, now we will start, for example, median nerve in the axilla, then the median nerve in the arm, median nerve in the cubital fossa, median nerve in the forearm, median nerve in the wrist, and median nerve in the hand, with some in remarks about, like, for example, the carpal tunnel syndrome. Okay, now, we will do that on next Monday, next Sunday, when we talk about nerves of uh, the upper limb. Okay, people who ask me about trigopalatine fossa, I have put on e-learning uh, a site for this film. Very nice site. Tells you what and where and how the trigopalatine fossa functions. Thank you.